what is up everyone it is michelle alexandria coming at you with a video i desperately 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 did i mention desperately need a new opening i'm tired of saying my name is michelle alexandria coming at you with a new video i need something really cool something really hip something that's going to really sing so um i want to spend a couple of moments minutes talking about this TCL 8 series and tell you how much I'm really, really loving this TV. I mean, this TV is outstanding. Um, but I don't have, I don't have much to say about it. So I just want to tell you some of the things I like and some of the things I dislike in no particular order. But before we do that, I wanted to say I am not doing any videos on Samsung, Samsung's recent TVs or anything until I actually see them in person or see reviews on them. And I advise everyone else to do that. Don't let these knee jerk reactionary YouTubers, um, who make a living trashing everything, uh, convince you not to buy it based on some specs. Specs aren't everything, people. And in this day and age of modern processor chips processing, I don't think you probably you probably don't even need a lot of demi zones. I mean, you could have 2,000 demi zones, and if the picture looks like crap and your processing chip is crap, then what's the point of having 2,000 demi zones? What's the point of having 2,000 nits if your picture looks like crap? So people are way too hung up on specs. I'm a wait and see kind of person. I want to wait until the TV's out and I see, and I can actually look at them at them myself and I'll form my own opinion. That's all there is to it. I don't get myself all twisted up in knots over, oh my God, this TV had a hundred demi zones last year and this year it has 70. Or, oh my God, this TV had 120 demi zones last year, but it has 180 this year, I think. TV specs are kind of pointless and stupid at the, in this day and age. So with that said, on to the TV, on, I said in New Jersey like for a minute there, on to the uh, TCL 8 series. I'm really loving this TV. I put about 80, I, I bought this TV like last Tuesday, I guess. And so I've had it for a solid week now and I put like 80 hours on it already. And I got to say, I watched all sorts of great content. <laughs> I watched like Star Blazers. I'm um, on Funimation. I did a binge watch of that. I watched Cold Case. I was watching old and new programming, some in HD, some in 4K. And everything, had, for the most part, has looked fantastic. When I first got this TV, I did not like the way I thought it crushed blast like a mug like a mug and that's m-u-g mug but i figured out how to do my picture settings and for the most part i got rid of the black crush i still occasionally see it i have not tried to watch mandalorian since i changed my picture settings so maybe i'll try that later but mandalorian is a terribly shot film show anyway it looks terrible on every tv i've had in the last month or so just because it's just an ugly looking show it even looks pretty bad on my b7 honestly um but from a pure picture quality standpoint this tv is a stunner it really is. It's, it actually is. I hate using that moniker OLED quality, but in terms of picture, not quality, but in terms of the color palette that, that's used, because every TV brand has its own unique look to it. You can always tell a Samsung TV when you look at it. You don't even have to see the panel to know a, what a Samsung TV looks like. Same with the Sony and same with the LG TV. I would say the color palette on this is more LG OLED light, only a lot brighter, but the, and this is where I go to numbers aren't everything. This TV supposedly gets over two th up to 2000 nits. And honestly, while it is a bright, certainly a bright TV, I don't see where it really impacts the content all as much as I thought it would. Like my OLED is pretty darn bright as well. And I have to turn that down on this one. This gets bright and I had to turn it down here. Um, so while it's a super bright TV, 
I don't know. I just don't see where I'm missing out. I mean, that was the one thing I really wanted to check. One of the reasons why I really wanted to get this TV because I'm one who's always arguing nits are and everything, and it's about the quality of the content. So I really wanted a super bright TV just to judge it for myself for once. And and this may be confirmation bias or not, but from a from my standpoint, the TV gets really bright, but I don't think it adds much punch. It doesn't make the picture more punchier than the picture of my OLED is. It just doesn't, even though it gets twice as bright as the OLED. But I st I'm still really loving this picture. I mean, the PQ is just outstanding on this TV. And it's amazing. And I'm not even going to say for a TCL or quote-unquote budget brand TV because I think that's kind of a stupid thing to say because a TV is a TV be a budget brand or high-end TV, you expect to get quality for your money. And this TV only cost me $1,500. And at $1,500, I think this TV is a steal for $1,500. If I was to return this TV, the only reason why I would consider returning this TV is because, <clears throat> I'm sorry, it's because I, I kind of really want another OLED. But I already own an OLED, so buying another OLED for me would be kind of a waste of money because it would make me feel like no matter how much I love OLED, it would just make me feel like I just spent another two or three thousand dollars on something I already have. That's not materially different than what I already have. This TV is different than what I already have and it's one of the reasons why I like it. I'm not a huge fan of the Roku system. I still don't like it. I don't like the fact that game mode in the advertising on in the box on the website, it says this thing includes auto low latency mode, but that's not true at all. Because when I turn on my PlayStation 4 Pro, they try to bring you guys some gaming videos and don't even get me started on what a disaster that was. Modern gaming sucks. I haven't played, turn on my gaming system in like a month and every game required one hour updates. It's ridiculous. Um, so that's why I didn't give you any videos with me playing some games because I'm not really a true gamer anymore and every time I feel like having a gamer a gaming day I have to sit there for like three hours while I wait for all these patches to upload it's trust me nuts so that's why there's no video no gaming video demo on this TV but I will say outside of game mode this TV is sluggish as heck I can you know, I'm someone who does not notice input lag normally, but this time the input lag on this TV was actually absolutely horrendous outside of game mode. But when you put it in the game mode, then everything is like, ah, because all of a sudden I was playing, I was kicking some butt in my Batman Arkham game. Um, that was the only game available that didn't require in like a 20 gigabyte update file so i was playing some batman arkham knight and in the challenge room and once i put this game this tv in the game mode it was amazing i hate the fact that game mode is also hidden so again in the marketing materials it says it's supposed to be all over automatically switch but it actually doesn't and i guess that's going to come out in the up in a future update but if you hit the star button on the remote control Game mode, if it's not going to automatically come up, then game mode should show up here, right here where it says picture mode. Game mode should show up right here in this area, and instead it doesn't. Game mode, you actually have to go all the way down into picture settings, scroll down, and then find game mode and turn it on right here. That's ridiculous. Game mode should be like right up. If this is being advertised as a gamer's TV, then game mode should be right up here in the picture mode area where you can actually just easily switch to game mode. So that's a, that's really annoying. And why is this switching over to uh, Adobe Vision Bright? So this is the other thing that's driving me a little crazy about this TV. Whenever I switch over to Apple TV, for some reason, I, I change my settings. I don't want to go out of this because I want the screen saving saver to stay up on on this while i talk over this video just to give you guys something beautiful to look at but every time i go into apple tv i i change my setting the match frame rate match content blah blah i do all of that stuff in my apple tv the tv 
goes, okay, cool, cool, cool. It works. And it works while I'm watching it. But the minute I go out of here and go back to the home screen and go into like YouTube on the Roku interface, and then I hit the hit the button to go back to Apple TV, it seems to insist on resetting all my settings again. And I don't know why it's doing that. It's kind of driving me. It's not driving me crazy or anything, but it's kind of annoying the crap out of me. The, the fact that it's not holding up my settings as I switch between uh, inputs. That's annoying as crap. That's kind of like a basic thing a TV should do. Uh, like if I'm in on my Apple TV, I should set this thing once and then go over to um, go over to my Roku app do whatever it is I'm going to do in Roku, come back, and then I'm going to be in the proper settings. Because, frankly, on my Apple TV, I never have had this automatically go into forced Dolby Vision mode. I, I keep it, I generally keep it on 4K SDR, and then when I'm watching content, it switches over to, I have match frame rate and match HDR turned on. So that's kind of, that's really annoying and obnoxious that every time I hit the button, it goes in and automatically switches and swaps. So that's annoying, but the picture quality is outstanding. Um, I'm amazed at the picture quality. Uh, in terms of sound, this this TV supposedly has built-in Dolby Atmos and a great uh, sound system um, built into the TV, but I have not been able to hear it because I have my, I have my soundbar hooked up to the HDMI ARC port, and and for some reason I can't because it's hooked up to the HDMI ARC port. I can't turn off the, I can't force the TV to play the audio unless I I, I, I can't force the TV to play the audio through the speakers unless I unhook it, unhook my soundbar from the TV. That's annoying. On my LG TV, on my OLED, I could do that very easily. I can go in turn off that setting and just listen to uh, the sound built-in sound system on my OLED. On this TV, I cannot do that at all unless I unhook the HDMI art port, unhook the sound bar from the TV, which is stupid. I should be able to do that here, but I can't because if you go in and you go in the sound mode settings, you see it's all blacked out. You can't do anything, which is ridiculous for sound mode and for sound settings. You see, it's on for Dolby Atmos, Atmos. For some reason, I just want to say Atmos. Um, and for virtual surround sound over here, you have on, off. That's it. That's all you have. You don't have you don't have the ability to turn off your sound bar so you can actually hear the fancy speakers that this TV has. So I really can't comment on how good or bad the speakers sound. I'm assuming a TV of this size to sell in thickness. This TV is thick and it's heavy. Um, you, I'm, I'm assuming, I'm gonna go on the assumption here that the TV sounds nice, but most people buying a TV like this, they're gonna, you're gonna end up buying at the very least a sound bar anyway. So, so what else about what else do I want to say about this TV? The remote control. I know a lot of people hate this remote because they think it's a tinker toy and it's plasticky and everything else. For me, I think the remote feels really nice in my hand. I really like the feel of the remote in my hand. The one thing I hate about the remote is that there are two things I don't like about the remote. The volume but the volume buttons and the mute buttons are on the side are on the side of the remote, which is stupid because then I'm always accidentally hitting that button. I'm always accidentally hitting the volume button and the volume buttons and the mute buttons. I'm always hitting those buttons because they're on the side of the remote and that's kind of annoying. Um, also, I feel that also, this is not a universal remote at all. This goes back to my overall issues with how HDMI CC works. On my OLED and every other TV I've had before, if I had, if I activated the HDMI CC functionality, whenever I switch to, especially with the Sony and the LG TVs I've had, and even when I had the Hisense TV, and definitely with Samsung TVs, when you when you when you plug your device into the TV, 
through art, then all of a sudden your TV will automatically recognize what that input is and set your remote to run the, to power those devices. This TV does not have that basic functionality. So again, I am in on my Apple TV. You would think I would be able to hit a button to go in to to actually be able to control my Apple TV with the with the Roku remote, but it does not do that at all. It uh, at best I could turn up the volume. I could turn the volume up and down, but that's it. I can't. I can't scroll around. I can't even get out of this screensaver with this remote. I have to go and pick up my Apple TV remote, which is stupid and annoying because every TV I've ever owned it had at least some sort of basic uh, universal functionality in their remotes. This remote does not have that. This remote also isn't TCO's highest end remote, quote unquote, because the highest end remote has a headphone jack where you can actually listen to everything um, has a headphone jack. And this Remote has no headphone jack at all. And you would think on on their highest end TV, TCL would see fit to at least include that remote in the box and they don't do th and they don't do that. That's annoying. Um so other than that, I don't have much else to say. I just really I'm loving this TV a lot. Um other than a few minor, a few issues that bug me, I think overall this has been my favorite experience with the TV with, that I've had in quite a while. I'm, and again, I, and I don't even like the Roku app, but I've been spending most of my time over here on the Apple TV side, and it's just been great experience so far. I'm enjoying the heck out of this. I don't know what more videos I can do on this. I don't even know if I am going to do any more videos because every, you know, if I try to show you clips, it's going to end up blocking everything. But all I want is, all I want to say is give things a try people. Don't let angry haters deter you from getting what you want. Because the way, as someone, as some YouTuber mentioned, you should always listen to the wisdom of the crowd. And I'm like, that is utter nonsense. You should never listen to the wisdom of the mob because the wisdom, quote unquote, quote unquote, of the quote unquote crowd is basically just a bunch of sheep parroting and regurgitating something their leader says. And there, there is no independent thought on the internet when it comes to wisdom of the quote unquote crowd. So you have to just get stuff and form your own opinion. And as I keep saying, when reviewers get TVs, they're getting them fresh off the boat. And those first batches of TVs are always gonna have flaws. And a lot of these TVs, because we're living in this smart world, all, all devices come broken these days, whether they be video games, gaming consoles, TVs, Phones, blah, blah, most electronic devices these days come broken because these companies know they could just, you know, send up a patch later. They could just patch it up. They could just patch it a few weeks later. Unfortunately, reviewers do not come back and review stuff after updates. They just kind of put out their, they put out their stuff and then they tell you everything's trash without going back and taking a second or third look at things because you know they form their opinion normally before they even buy it and then <clears throat> once they get their confirmation bias they put out their review and and that's it that becomes the only thing they can talk about is how trashy something is without actually revisiting it like three months or six months later when a lot of the issues initial issues have been fixed i'm not saying that i i'm not saying any reviewer is lying but everyone has different experiences with tvs and again all hard all these hard hardware devices are now updated and patched up after release we we're no longer living in the old days where things just came perfectly formed when you bought it unfortunately that's just the fact of modern life so anyway i don't know what else i could say about this tv but i am loving it and like i said before if i return it right now i'm about 80 percent sure i'm keeping this if i do return it it's simply because i want an oled or I don't need a new TV. That would be the only reason why. I wish I lived in a bigger market where I could easily sell a TV and get rid of my B7. 
Um, but I I live in a small market, and I've tried. I've been trying to sell my B seven for months, and I can't get it sold. So anyway, um, I don't know what else to say other than to keep saying um 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 um. So anyway, talk to you guys later. Have a great day. Bye.